Next week is National Safe Boating Week, and if there is any group that knows the dangers of not staying safe on the water, it's the U.S. Coast Guard. Isn't that the truth? So in a single year, the Coast Guard responded to nearly 20,000 search and rescue cases, saving nearly 3,600 lives. Just incredible. And Rich, I know that you uh, went on board, in fact, with the Coast Guard to see exactly how they literally, you know, train for these vital rescues to save lives constantly training and even before they take off they're going through the plan on what they're going to do to be that lifeline these crews are literally the lifeline for people that are in a life or death situation the rescues can be very tense and difficult in severe weather but the crew is focused on one thing that is getting the person or the people that are stranded back to their family safely perfecting that comes with lots and lots of practice Imagine seeing this as you're stranded in open water. A rescue swimmer coming to pull you to safety. But this is just a training exercise. This particular swimmer, Donnie Walker, has nearly 20 years of experience under his belt, or in this case, his flippers. Two pilots and a flight mechanic are on board the chopper, all focused on hitting their target. They do this training to make sure that happens when it matters most. Like during these rescues last month in Georgia. Coast Guard Air Station Savannah crews help rescue an 81-year-old man from a sinking boat in Little Black River and two men who were stranded in Sepolo Sound after their sailboat ran aground. Both times, crews used a basket like this one to pull people to safety. It's capable of hoisting 600 pounds. But in some rescues, that basket isn't an option. And the rescue swimmer has to jump in and swim to the person the crew calls the survivor. He goes in without any extra oxygen, just a snorkel and a special suit. The gear definitely takes some time to get used to. Heavier seas, it uh, can be a bit of a curse. All right, survivors getting in the basket. That's typically when these rescues happen, when the water and the wind is working against the rescue crew. But it says this process has become automatic. We're always just following procedures, doorways, going through the checks, you know, fins on, straps are tight. All of this is so carefully coordinated. Pilot Kelly Davis says the crew's planning starts even before they leave the airfield. We do a pretty in-depth mission training every time we go fly. So we know the winds are out of the east. We'll probably have the boat on an easterly heading, um, trying to keep the helicopter into the wind. And then we've got a hoisting plan as well, as far as which evolutions we're going to do it in what order. Also key to these missions, as every crew member will tell you, are flexibility and communication. This is Bryce Kitchen. He's the flight mechanic. Each scenario is completely different. Um, you, like I said, just play it by ear. Make sure everybody's communicating inside the, inside the helicopter. He essentially drives the helicopter from the back. Most of the times when you when you go to put the swimmer down, um, you know, there comes a certain point where they might drift a little bit farther underneath than what the pilot can see. So, you know, I'm their eyes and ears on their visual reference of, hey, this is where the basket is when it's going down. This is, hey, the basket's on deck. This is where the swimmer is. This is where the survivor is. In the end, all of this coordination and training comes down to one thing, saving lives. And Pilot Kelly Davis says the key to saving your own life and making their job that much easier is early notifications. He says you need to have the right equipment to get in contact with the Coast Guard so that they can get to you as quickly as they can. And you know, how many times during that story, and it was what, two and a half minutes or so, did you hear the word communication? Wow. That is the key. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they truly are really good. So I I've heard those Coast Guard helicopter pilots are like the best in the business. The and here's best what, pilots out there. That's what I've heard from so many people, uh, you know, across all industries, Rich. I was blown away with Kelly, and here's why. All the pilots that I know that fly helicopters, they all started in fixed wing. They all started in airplane. Kelly did a very short stint in a fixed wing as part of the training, but went right to helicopter and, I mean, just flew the thing like a surgeon, a scalpel, just the way it came in, the way they got the swimmer down in the water, the way they got the basket on the boat. Everything was just so precision. And the only thing that I want to add to all this is we were out there, and Vic, we've talked about this before, those pesky Mylar balloons, even when we were out on the various boats, we would see them. Those things are just dangerous in the water for wildlife. But not only that, in the helicopter, they're actually kind of a beacon. And when you're looking for possible uh, people that are in the water, those things can hamper time to find the actual person because they're focused in on these shining little spots that are floating around errantly in the Atlantic. Mm.
So true. Richard, well, we hope our story. viewers are listening then and know that. Thank, thank you, Rich. Great information. And we so much appreciate the men and women who are out there every day and helping to keep everybody on the water safe.